A thermocouple amplifier with cold junction compensation is explained in this example, that is the 200th 11th video in the circuit design and analysis playlist. At the input of this circuit, we have a K-type thermocouple with a chromal alloy and alumel alloy as the wire types. This K-type thermocouple allows us to measure the hot temperature TH at the hot junction between 0 to 100, 400 degrees C and above in different industrial applications. And then we want the circuit or amplifier to be designed in such a way that the output of the amplifier V out provide a voltage with temperature coefficient of 10 millivolt per degree C, effectively mapping the 0 to 400 degree C at the input of the circuit to uh, effectively equivalent zero volt to four volt at the output of the circuit. Basically, the dynamic range of the output voltage uh, in the circuit is going to be zero to four volt, corresponding to 10 millivolt per degree C uh, temperature sensitivity. Okay, so how does uh, the circuit work? How can we realize this is discussed in this video, and then we find the formula for the output voltage of the circuit. So uh, before we forget, given what is being said, the desired behavior of the circuit, I'm going to write it here. So we desire, basically, we want the behavior of the circuit be in a way that V out is 10 millivolt per degree C times the T hot junction. That's what we want. I'm not saying right now the circuit is providing this, but that is what we want. All right, so the idea is understanding what the circuit is doing to achieve that using the two op amps, op amp one and two that are properly biased, and then also the Zener diode 2.4 volt that is given a specific value in this circuit, and then two potentiometers, potentiometer one and two, that they are playing important roles in this circuit. Now, aside from analyzing the circuit, I would like to uh, show you uh, the examples of, of K-type thermocouple that are easily available from Amazon or other provider, and also some of them can be purchased from places like Home Depot and Lowe's. And then uh, the types of thermocouple, the famous Zbeck temperature coefficient of thermocouple, and then the reason that I just mentioned why I specifically selected 2.4 volts in our diet. Okay, so at the input of the circuit, as I just mentioned, we have a K-type thermocouple. The reason for K-type is because of a specific alloys used, chromel and alumel. Chromel is 90% nickel and then 10% uh, chromium. Alumel is 95% roughly nickel and then uh, aluminum and a bunch of other things. With these material, we are realizing K-type thermocouple that has a very unique temperature sensitivity of 40.7 microvolt per degree C, which is also referred to as temperature coefficient of the thermocouple or also named uh, paltier Zbeck coefficient. These are the name of two famous scientists who worked on this uh, phenomenon. So, and that coefficient is 40.7 microvolt per degree C for the thermocouple. For a reasonable range of uh, concern, this can be assumed to be constant, but in practice for a wide range, this can also vary uh, slightly. Okay, so with that said, just uh, before I forget, there are nine uh, categories of uh, thermocouples depending on the type of materials used. For example, when we are using, uh, as I just showed, chromel and alumel as the alloys, then it's a K-type. But if there are other material used, then E-type, J-type, and then N-type and other types can be realized for uh, the thermocouple. Okay, so with that said, uh, the temperature coefficients of these different types are shown here. For example, for the 0 to 1500 degree C, because some of these uh, thermocouples are used in, in pretty aggressive and corrosive and super high temperature environment that rarely other temperature sensors can, can tolerate. So uh, as you can see, type K is highlighted in red color and it can actually go from 0 degree C to environments above 1000 degree C for measurement. So x-axis is temperature of uh, T hot. So that is the hot temperature that we want to measure uh, at the hot junction. And the y-axis is the millivolt voltage or electro, um, 
electric force at the output of the thermocouple that is uh, generated voltage by the thermocouple. So for example, when we are dealing with 1000 degree, then you can see that, uh, for instance, the K, t uh, type K or K type can realize about 41, roughly 40.7 millivolt voltage at 1000 uh, uh, degree C measured at the hot junction as expected. For other types, we have different coefficients. As you can see, the slope of these uh, lines are different, corresponding to different uh, Seebeck coefficients uh, or Peltier coefficient. Now, if we zoom in in this limited area, meaning uh, the, the range of, say, if this is 500 degrees C, let's zoom to 50 degrees C. So I am talking about uh, basically zooming in this range. So in this area, if we zoom into that range, we end up with this situation here. So here is the uh, millivolt on the y-axis output voltage of, or V, uh, let's, let's say output voltage is referred to as V thermocouple. That is the output voltage of the thermocouple sensor. Um, so uh, that's the y-axis. X-axis is the hot temperature, but in a limited range of zero to 50 degrees C the small range that I just mentioned here, the zoomed in range. So that is TH in degree C. Then you can see that it is exactly, uh, the, the blue line here is actually supposed to be the, that red line that I showed you for the, uh, for the K type. So let me change the color of this blue line to what is supposed to be so that there is no confusion. This is the red line for the limited range. And you can see for 50 degrees C, we are getting as expected something on the order of 20, something on the order of two millivolt, because obviously we are saying that voltage at the output of the thermocouple is equal to the Zbeck coefficient, 40.7 microvolt per degree C times 50. And if we compute that, we end up with uh, 2.035, millivolt which is roughly two millivolt so that's exactly what this 2.035 indicating in this uh, scenario okay so now that we understand how uh, the let's say the voltage is generated at the output of the thermocouple let's get back to the circuit and see what's going on so ideally ideally what we would have liked to see in the in this circuit let me just zoom in so that we have everything in, in one view. Okay, ideally what we would have liked to see in this circuit is this situation. So ideally, ideal scenario, we wanted the voltage at the output of the thermocouple to be just simply, and let me change the color back to something that is easy to see, to be simply 40.7, microvolt per degree C times the temperature of a hot junction, basically this temperature. And then uh, if that is the case, then we would have applied that to our amplifier. So to a amplifier with some gain, because it's weak right now, the 40.7 microvolt per degree C is small. So maybe a gain of 100, 200 to get the output voltage in a reasonable range. By output voltage, I mean somewhere here. But the problem is, uh, so that's the ideal scenario. So that's the ideal scenario. The problem is in practice, that is not the case. So practical scenario, the issue is v uh, the voltage generated by the thermocouple, sure, it's following the same 40.7 microvolt per degree C, but it is not sensing TH. It is sensing TH minus a TC. In this scenario on top, it was TH minus zero. We were assuming that the measured voltage, well, the measured temperature was with respect to zero uh, reference temperature. But unfortunately, the reference term temperature for thermocouple is not zero, it's actually T cold. So this one is hot temperature, and this one is cold temperature. And that cold temperature is the reference that is enforced by the circuit because uh, the two wires of the thermocouple uh, has to be connected, they have to be connected to copper wires. So these are now the copper wires we have here, and these copper wires are at PCB temperature. 
so what we refer to as T cold, the cold junction temperature or PCB temperature, and what is measured by the thermocouple is TH minus TC, or basically the delta. So I'm going to write it here. TH minus TC is the delta T. So delta T is the one that, uh, based on that, thermocouple is going to uh, generate a voltage and uh, now somehow we need to compensate for this minus TC that was is not supposed to be there we want to get rid of it and in order to get rid of it we need to compensate for it and that's why the name of the circuit becomes thermocouple amplifier with cold junction compensation or CJC and that's exactly what the circuit is trying to do so basically in summary this circuit is doing two things one cold junction compensation and the other one is amplification because the signal is weak the voltage signal generated by the thermocouple okay so how do we deal with this situation we have here and by the way before i forget uh, there are these there are many types of there are many providers for these k-type thermocouples as examples uh, and they can purchase on the order of say ten dollar to twenty dollar easily and many uh, many options uh, these are the ones that for example can be purchased in amazon uh, or let's say the likes of Home Depot and here are two cases one is uh, from this provider K-type metal wrap thermocouple uh, you can see uh, here is the head of the junction the two alloys are connected to each other and that's the point of measurement here and uh, then we have uh, then we have the as another example uh, we have the one here with some isolation for the wires of thermocouple as you can see here for let's say uh, the so basically it is wa waterproof and it's for application where we want to measure the temperature of liquid or environment that is wet so with that said okay so let's get back to what the problem is all right so we want to get rid of this unwanted cold temperature of reference node and then we want to also amplify the weak 40.7 microvolt that's the idea now with that said uh, we as, as a as a way to deal with that as you can see we put a zinner diode in the isothermal cold junction basically we put it in such a way that is thermally connected to a pcb or the uh, or the copper wires so that uh, temperature of the Zinner diode is same as T cold. So I'm going to write here T Zinner or temperature of Zinner is equal to T cold. Reason for that is uh, this idea. The PCB temperature is between 0 and 50. That's a very good assumption range for PCB temperature. It's uh, very rare uh, and should not be like that. The temperature of PCB would be beyond this range. Now, uh, let's say the PCB happened to be at 30 degree. It means that T cold is 30 degree. So that's T cold. And uh, if T cold at 30 degree, then uh, we have uh, basically uh, this level, uh, about 1.2 millivolt that need to be compensated for that because uh, that's exactly going to be the effect of the cold temperature. So uh, what happens is as a result of T cold being 30, then the, v uh, the, the voltage of the thermocouple couple that is measured is less than what it's supposed to be because uh, it's not going to measure the TH, it's going to measure TH minus 30 degree. So that needs to be compensated. How, the, how is that possible? We put a Zinner diode that has uh, a proper temperature coefficient. In this case, Take a look what we're going to get. So I'm going to write V Zener. It's a very specific Zener diode. It's a 2.4 volt. And if I go down to uh, the, let's say, Vichy example, so Zener diodes from, let's say, the like of Vichy, here is the 2.4 volt nominal voltage for Zener VZ, this guy. And then you can see we have one n fifty two twenty one. And uh, of course, the milliamp BIOS current need to be there, so we will talk about it. But then take a look at the temperature coefficient of this Zener diode. It's uh, percent per degree C or degree Kelvin, and it's negative 0.085 for 2.4 volt.
So I'm going to use uh, these values right now. So vzener as a result is equal to so is equal to 2.4 volt nominal at at 0 degree C so 0 degree C times 1 minus it says 0 0.085 divide by 100 because it says percent and then delta T meaning that T versus the reference reference is 0 degree C where it is 2.4 volt nominal so uh, temperature in degree and what is the temperature we just said the Zinner diode is uh, set in a, in a way that it's thermally connected to the PCB and to copper uh, so that's why we are putting it in this blue box which is the blue box of isothermal cold junction anything in this blue box it's thermally uh, experiencing same temperature, which is the cold junction, which is the PCB temperature or copper temperature. So therefore, uh, instead of T, I'm going to write just TC. So, okay, there you go. TC. T cold. Okay, great. So let's uh, then substitute that with uh, what we know because that's that VZ is the voltage here so I'm gonna write the plus minus VZ here with a different color let me just uh, clean up okay let me just clean up here so it's gonna be plus minus VZ the voltage across the Zinner diode and the temperature of the Zinner diode is of course the TC that I just mentioned now VZ is not what is being applied to the circuit it's sort of a scale down version using this voltage divider is applied so what the circuit is going to experience via this node is uh, the alpha times vz where alpha is the scale down via the voltage divider the voltage divider is 100 ohm series with 4.9k and uh, it's just 100 divided by 100 plus 4900 which is 5000 so that's basically 100 over 5000 vz that is sensed by the circuit okay so uh, in summary what we have is sort of a kvl see what's going on we have this situation and effectively with this polarity that is shown which is same as this polarity and we are going to the positive terminal of op amp number one which then enables us to measure measured voltage vm at positive terminal of op amp number one or non-inverting terminal of op amp number one and clearly op amp number one is let me just uh, show it in a better way clearly op amp number one is in buffer mode as you can see the wiring is very simple from output back to negative terminal so op amp one assuming properly bias is just a simply a buffer unity gain buffer with gain of one and since that is the case then vm that is in positive terminal also appears at the output so vm is also here okay very nice let's also name these resistors because we're going to use them uh, so i'm going to name this resistor here as uh, resistor R1 and the series of these two resistors 110k and the potentiometer 10k I'm going to refer to it as resistor R2 feedback resistor of the second op amp and for relationship between Vm and V out uh, for that pers from that perspective the op amp number two is simply a inverting amplifier so uh, with that said I can just write it this way I can write <clears throat> so I can write V out is equal to uh, let me write it here so I can write uh, V out is equal to minus R2 over R1 the inverting amplifier gain times Vm 
So I'm going to I'm, I'm using superposition, meaning that for a second I am assuming uh, the adjustment V adjust that is generated here via the potentiometer and the series of 539k connected to 5 volt. I am assuming V adjust for now is zero. So basically zero volt is here, and therefore this is purely an inverting amplifier with a gain that I showed you. But then so using superposition, we know that this is not necessarily zero, so V adjust can be any needed voltage that we need, and I'm going to show you why. And from that perspective, that V adjust appears at positive terminal, and for, uh, from positive terminal to output, we are dealing with basically a non-inverting amplifier with a gain of 1 plus R2 over R1 times V adjust. Okay, so let's name this equation number one. Okay, now what's the use of this equation number one? All right, so this Vm, uh, we just said Vm is equal to, so I'm using a KVL or Kirchhoff voltage law. So from Vm to ground, it is a series of, with the polarity, uh, with the polarity shown here is VTH, which is the thermocouple, and then, so I'm going to write it, minus V thermocouple, and then plus this contribution. So it's clearly as, as seen and highlighted, uh, effectively we have the thermocouple voltage with negative polarity in series with the 100 over 50 VZ, so it's VZ over 50. Okay, so let's name this equation number two. All right, and uh, we have the equation for VZ as well. I'm going to name this equation number three that is shown here. Okay, so I'm, I can substitute for VZ that way, and then for V thermal, we can also substitute that from equation number four here. So let me just uh, show it clearly because that's that's what we have in practice effectively. So there you go. That's equation four. Okay, so I'm gonna use combination of equations. So basically we have two. Uh, let me just make sure I have enough space. That was our V out. And then what I am showing is I am saying, hey, look at equation two, and then use equation three and equation four. So in equation two, I'm going to substitute for V thermal and uh, for V thermal, thermocouple and VZ. So I have basically VM or measured voltage equal to minus. So V thermocouple. And uh, I can feed the minus. Uh, to TH and uh, minus TC, so I'm going to get, as a result, I'm going to get minus uh, 40.7 microvolt TH plus 40.7 microvolt TC, and for VZ uh, I have if I compute this whole thing that is written here, so if I compute this uh, this whole thing divide by 50 as is there, we're going to get uh, 48 millivolt. That is 2.4 volt divided by 50. And then for the rest of it, uh, we have minus, so 0 0.085 divided by 100, and then times 2.4, and then divide by 50. That will give us 40.8 micro volt times TC. That's very interesting. So the beautiful the beautiful outcome is already there. So I can just summarize what I got. Vm equal to minus 40.7 microvolt TH and then combine these two together. We have minus 0 
1, Tc, the cold temperature, and then plus a 48 millivolt constant. This is what I was looking for. There you go. This is what I was looking for. So equation 5. Now I can feed equation 5 back into equation 1. So from using combination of 1 and 5 by substituting 5 in 1 what we get is V out is equal to so minus R2 over R1 Vm so it's going to be um, plus R2 over R1 times so that minus and minus became plus and then times 40 points uh, 7 micro times th so it's 40.7 micro times th and then this is almost negligible t cold so uh, we can just assume this is approximately zero so we can even neglect that one because uh, th this this um, i need to be clear here this point one is point one microvolt so that's why i'm saying this is pretty negligible Okay, I'm going to neglect that then. So, it just re, re, just uh, 48 millivolt that we need to deal with for the VM. So, it's going to be minus R2 over R1, 48 millivolt. And finally, uh, the component that I have here is just 1 plus R2 over R1 and uh, V adjust. So, 1 plus R2 over R1 times V adjust. So basically, in equation 5, we got rid of the dependency on with the proper choice of the Zinner diode and uh, the, its corresponding voltage and its unique temperature coefficient, then we ended up with exactly being able to compensate and counteract uh, properly uh, for uh, the situation we have in terms of dependency on the cold temperature. Now, let's just uh, make the final adjustment and then we are done. So, uh, therefore... V out equal to, okay, this is desired. This is the desired portion. And this portion is not desired, unwanted, in the V out. And go back to what the desire, ideal, ideal behavior is. So, see, Ideal behavior is dependency on the hot temperature with a scale of 10 millivolt per degree C. Are we there? Almost there. So we have V out. We have dependency on TH. And then we have this scale here, which has to be 10 millivolts. So I'm going to just make the change. So uh, this portion, let me change it with the, <laughs> write it with the proper color. So this portion is the desired one. Okay, so this portion is the desired one, and uh, that desired one is what is supposed to be, that desired one is what is supposed to be the, the value of, so that desired one is what's supposed to be the value of, let me break it down here, so the desired portion supposed to be R2 over R1, 40.7 microvolt per degree C times TH equal to 10 millivolt uh, per degree C times TH. Therefore, what I understand is 10 should be equal to R2 over R1 uh, and then 40. That's what we need to basically uh, set here 10 millivolt equal to 10 to 40 microvolts so as a result of this we get and, and for the, for the unwanted portion so let's say for unwanted portion what we wanted unwanted portion should be equal to zero so therefore minus uh, so so therefore as a result of that r2 over r1 times 48 millivolt in this scenario, should be equal to, by setting the unwanted portion to zero, should be equal to 
1 plus r2 over r1 times b adjust. So uh, from here, we can figure out everything. Basically, uh, from the first one, the only unknown is r2 over r1. We can find the value of r2 over r1. And it turned out that r2 over r1, if you compute this quickly, is roughly equal to, is going to be 1,000. That's, uh, and then divide by 4. Uh, 0.07 which give us 245.7 so 245.7 is the ratio of r2 over r1 how do we get that in practice that's exactly the reason we have a 10 kilo ohm potentiometer because if we have a r1 470 ohm so with r1 equal to 470 ohm we get r2 should be equal to then because we found just the uh, 245.7 we find the other one equal to uh, 11 15 48 kilo ohm. so what is the meaning of this given that 110 is coming from fixed resistor it means that the potentiometer has to be, the 10 kilo ohm potentiometer has to be set to 5.5. So this means uh, RP or potentiometer should be equal to roughly 5.5 kilo ohm. Okay, so that's the situation for the potentiometer. Now uh, we know the gain. So since R2 over R1 now is known, we know the r2 over r1 in this equation therefore the only unknown would be just v adjust so from this setting we can find v adjust is equal to roughly it can be easily computed close to 48 so it's 47.8 uh, so it's going to be uh, about 47.8 millivolt And the rest of it is very straightforward. How do we get to this 48.7? Well, go back to how V adjust is computed. See, uh, V adjust is just basically a voltage division or a scale down from the, uh, let's say, supply of or input supply of 5 volt via 39 kilo ohm to 500 ohm to get to the V adjust in this potentiometer. So we can just simply say, uh, okay, so. We can just simply say uh, V adjust, which is 47.8 millivolt, is equal to uh, the setting of this 500 divided by series of 39 and 500 times 5 volt. So it's going to be X, the setting, 39.5K times 5 volt so times 5 volt so the only unknown in this situation is the x value or let's say the resistance of potentiometer number 2 so rp2 so in this case we find the rp2 equal to rp2 is equal to and uh, it's easy about uh, just quickly compute that 47.8 divide by times um, 39.5 kilo ohm and then divide by 5 volt so 377.6 so it's 377.6 ohm okay so it means uh, the 500 ohm potentiometer for the viper it needs to be adjusted for the viper to to represent 300 roughly 77.6 ohm with that we get the right v adjust at uh, the positive terminal so that he compensate for the fixed voltage coming from the zener throughout the circuit and therefore uh, we set the value of v out to proper notes so that zero is zero so basically we get this a characteristic that is requested that 0 to 400 map is mapped to 0 to 4 volt um, so that
that concludes the analysis of the circuit. Basically, we figured out all the components and we figured out why the Zener was selected to provide us with the proper temperature uh, coefficient that in equation five uh, manages to sort of counteract the dependency on TC where 40.7 was coming from the thermocouple, thermocouple and then uh, the 40.8 was coming from the Zener diode. So I hope this example and detailed analysis is, has been helpful or was helpful in terms of uh, showing how we can analyze the thermocouple amplifiers and how we can select the components so that we achieve the proper amplification for the proper sensitivity at the output and also how we can achieve the cold junction compensation so that we get rid of dependency on TC uh, in the measurement. Thanks for watching.